Hello everybody, this is Dr. Kevin Connors again. In, in this uh, video, we are going to go over what I would do with a person as we look at the different specific genes that are related to different tumor markers and other factors that would influence or give us hints on what diet a person should be on. So if we haven't done this with you yet, make sure if you have your genetics back and you're a patient of mine that we that we do this um, or if you're signed up to do this this is what we're going to be looking at so this is your uh, a list of all your genes currently as we speak now uh, 23 and me is reading about a little over 9,000 genes and there are certain ones that we're more interested in than others, and there's lots that we don't even know anything about yet. So um, the ME1 genes are the malic enzyme 1 genes, and here's my sample patient. And so just so you know, on this genetic profile, this picture here, this is the gene itself. You can see my cursor there. So this is the gene, these ME1 genes. This is a family of a bunch of different genes. Um, this gene right here, this is the name of the gene. You don't have to worry about any of that. But this is what we're looking at. Is there a variant or a defect on that gene? You will receive one allele from your mother, one allele from your father. And if you received no defective alleles from your parents, there'll be a zero or a blank. That means that gene is working as best as it can work. Now, there's other obviously other environmental factors that influence that gene's ability to function. But at least from a genetic standpoint, there's no defect on that gene. If there's a one here, that means you have a single allele defect or a heterozygous defect. That means that gene isn't going to work quite as well, we could say. And if there's a two, it's going to work even less quite as well. That's not correct grammar, but you know what I mean. So we don't want to have twos on most of our genes. It's going to affect the function of that gene. So that's what we're looking at. That's how we read this. So this family of ME1 genes, what the malic enzyme 1 gene does, is it affects your cell's ability to use fatty acids to produce um, energy. So then the cell would then more be apt to resort to glucose for the production of energy and function. So in a cancer patient, if a person has a lot of ME1 gene defects, they're going to be more prone to use a, a glucose and lactic acid as a fuel source. And, and in this video, we're going over trying to discover what the, what is some good hints at what possibly the cancer is being fueled through. Is it being fueled through proteins, through glutamine and methionine, or is it being fueled mainly through glucose and lactic acid? So this would be hit number one for our patient here. If this was yours, you have a lot of twos here, number of ones and some zeros, and then you can look at how common is a double allele defect, a two on this specific gene right here, only 2.7% of the population of this group, and we have about 21,000 people in this group, and understand that's not a healthy cohort of people. This is a group of people that are sick. So we don't want to be only 2.7% of the sick people, only 6.9% of the sick people have this too. That makes it even more significant, possibly, that that is an important pathway. So already with this patient, I'd say, oh, it's looking pretty good like we're going on a ketogenic diet because you don't use fatty acids very well in the cell for glucose for uh, excuse me energy production and you're going to be already more prone to firing down glycolysis using glucose and and um, lactic acid as a fuel source so the cancer is more than likely going to use glucose and lactic acid as a fuel source. So we got to decrease the amount of glucose and lactic acid that our cells are exposed to. Now it's a lot to chew on, but that will help you understand. Just follow me with this. This is how I look at a person's genetics to know which, um, which uh, diet would, would, would be probably best for them. The ASNS gene, this is another gene that has to do with glutamine and glutamine production. So this person has a single allele defect, not a real common defect on this gene right here. 
these ones are a little bit more common. This would point to we really should decrease glutamine levels and glutamate levels. Um, so a little bit of conflict in the, from this one to the last one. So we're weighing this all out as we look at all the genes. The HIF genes, this has to do with, uh, I have a video on HIF um, somewhere in our whole genetic pathway videos, but HIF is how you will actually convert lactic acid, pruvic acid, into acetyl coenzyme A to get into the Krebs cycle. And people with HIF defects are definitely going to be more prone to uh, using lactic acid as a fuel source for their cancer. So here's hit number two with these ones on this, this um, uh, gene pathway that we got to go to a ketogenic diet. So I'm pulling up these genes individually because they're not shown in our report because these are all fairly unique genes to when we look at cancer. That last gene I pulled up, the person didn't have any defects on. Now this mTOR gene, they have quite a few defects on this. The um, intervention for this would be EGCG, curcumin, possibly a little caffeine, and resveratrol. So that's what I might recommend for the person that we're going to up that. A lot of people already have them on that product anyhow. The TP53 is your P53 gene. Um, this is one of the most researched cancer tumor suppressor genes there is. Um, to understand what tumor suppressor genes are. Tumor suppressor genes are genes that are supposed to turn on if a cell goes into a rapid replication phase. So then they suppress the tumor. When these genes turn on, it kicks in um, a process to stimulate apoptosis. So if I have a cell that starts to go into a rapid replication, aka cancer, a tumor suppressor pathway is supposed to kick on and cause apoptosis to kill that cell. Well, that's what we're looking at. So P53 is one of the most researched tumor suppressor genes, and there are um, no defects, really, to speak of in this person. So that this T P53 is more for colon cancer, um, which this person didn't have. The PIC genes, this person has a few defects in the PIC genes. Um, curcumin would be the intervention on that as well. And the P10 gene, which is a very highly um, research gene now currently they have a few defects on this so i would definitely put this person on an increased amount of curcumin given their defects that they have the kros pathways are very important pathways um, this person just has a few defects in this this would push towards a more ketogenic like diet so so far i would put this person on a more ketogenic like diet so remember there's three diets the mixed diet is what all of our patients go on to begin with and if you don't know what your genes are and you have cancer and you are watching this video and you have no idea what the genes are you should go on our mixed diet catch that video on the mixed diet or a person's going to be on a more ketogenic diet which i would put this person on a more ketogenic diet or a person is going to be on a more low protein diet low glutamine and low methionine now this person i'm going to put on a fairly low glutamine diet and a ketogenic diet. So this is how we tailor a diet to the patient based upon their genetics, um, not based upon some dogma or some book we read. So we want to be as specific to possible. So this person would go on a more ketogenic-like diet and a low glutamine diet. So it would be a very tailored diet. So if you know anything about a ketogenic diet, they're eating a lot more glutamine. Well, we're going to have decreased glutamine stores of this person too. So it's going to be very specific for this person. So that's how we look at just the cancer genes um, to look at diet. And in further videos, we'll get more into each one of these genes and more details if you really want to nerd out on it. But hope this was helpful. Dr. Connors, thank you so much. Bye-bye.